so as of now we have all been training our models uh, on the same kind of training data right so there's not really much of a specialist knowledge that kind of comes into each of those models so before we kind of jump into figuring out how you kind of put this specialist knowledge into each of those models let's try and understand what do we even mean by specialist right why do we even need specialist right so the specialist concept is this which we can much better understand through this particular example where say there's a hospital and there are three medical interns right so come in you're the hospital management and you have two possible options right so obviously there are three medical cases that they're kind of the hospital management which is you you're kind of you know you're kind of figuring out how to solve those three medical cases and you have got three medical interns to kind of solve those cases right so what are the three medical cases you have heart disease broken bones and cancers so you have got three diseases which you want someone to kind of take care of and you have got those three medical interns now there are two possible options in front of you one is you train all of those three interns on all three of them right so the intern one is trained on heart diseases broken bone and cancer intern two is also trained on the three diseases intern three is also trained on the three diseases right that's first option the second option is you train intern one only on heart disease you train intern two only on broken bones you train intern three only on cancer right so those are two options what do you think is a good option for you to go ahead with take a minute if you want to and think about it so here we are i hope you took a minute to think you might some of you might have option one and some of you might think option two is a better one now why is option one a better one because in case you have if you are going with option two right in case of option two you are training each of those interns separately on one particular disease now what happens if one of those interns is a really lazy or lethargic guy right he doesn't learn really very well so then you're losing out right so that disease is completely neglected whereas in case of option one even one of them is lazy or lethargic you have two other interns working on the same problem right so they can pick it up very well so that's a pro that's a pro of option one and kind of con of option two now what is the pro of option two option two you are kind of training each of those medical students on one particular example right one particular data and they know extremely well about that particular problem medical problem right they know in depth about what is the right way to solve that problem so if they know it then it's much much better easier for them to kind of for each of those interns to look into individual diseases right so this is the exact concept of specialist right so specialist is basically master of uh, it's not exactly master of all trades you're kind of mastering one trade at a time and then kind of figuring out how do you kind of using all of those knowledge each of those masters how can you assemble them into one particular case where you have a master of all the diseases right so that's option two now what we do we do when we do it naive aggregation we did exactly what is option one right so we had if you remember so we have this training data and what did we do we trained each of the models individually on them right so all of your models are trained on the same data right so that is exactly option one where you have each of these interns and they're trained on all of the data right so obviously you can intuitively understand what is the concept that we are kind of going ahead and talking here in case of naive aggregation this is what we did right so we had an entire training data and we have multiple models trained on this right m1 m2 m3 m4 right so we had one particular training data and we train multiple models on that right and what are we going to do here right now yeah. we're going to take the train data and now we're going to split it right so obviously as this was the option one right where you had one particular case all the cases here and everyone was looking into all the cases right so instead of doing that we are going to split this data like this and now what we are going to do is train a model on individually each of them right so m1 this is m2 and this is m3 and so this is m4 right so now when we again the idea is again going to be the same right so we have multiple models trained on different parts of the data how again we're going to aggregate them how do we aggregate them again the same thing right so what did we do here so there were options like averaging which is called soft voting weighted average there was clustering based on clustering there were also a lot of ideas that you can see here in the additional resources part the same thing we are going to do here also right so each of your models is going to give you some probability on a new test data point right on a new test 
point each of your model is going to give you some probability right of it belonging to class one so now how do you finally get the final probability of the all of the models combined is basically nothing but average of p1 p2 and so on p4 like with likewise with naive aggregation you can also do all of this advanced things that we have discussed in the lecture right now you can go ahead think out of the box and you can still again think of all of the very you know novel ways to do aggregation but for now let's kind of take a moment out to think what are the different ways in which you can split the data right so in case of specialist sampling in case where we are trying to train specialists on each part of the data we have to try and think out how do we kind of what is the strategy for splitting them right so let's first try and discuss that try and understand what are the different strategies for you know splitting the data so this was the original training data and you have split that into multiple parts right so what are the what could be possible ideas to split this data on right so let's think what is the most obvious one right the most obvious one is split them randomly what is the next what are some of the other ideas in which you can do it split based on say features what does split based on features in, imply so basically you can have something which is one model one ensemble just for continuous so this is the one which has just got continuous variables this is the other one which has got just categorical variables right so one for continuous versus categorical so you can when you're doing splitting by random by the way you can split both by features as well as by rows split by features randomly or split by rows right split based on features you can do continuous versus categorical you can choose missing versus non-missing or something like outlier versus non-outlier outlier features which basically i've got a lot of outlier features and the one which has got non-outlier features so these are some of the techniques to split based on features right how can you do split based on based on rows right so rows so when i say rows basically data points split based on data points again you can do so random which is already mentioned here so random is this so that's the default option apart from that what are different ways right so again you can again choose outliers so any data point that you think is an outlier right in itself so you do multivariate clustering and then you see any particular data point not fitting this so that is one way to kind of pick up those data points which don't belong to any cluster as outlier and you can do a model for them separately as compared to the other ones and for any new data point that comes in you basically see whether it's closer to the outlier point or the non-outlier cluster and based on that you can choose whether to kind of which which of the models to use right so that is how you use for test prediction in test prediction you basically figure out that which is the model that you're gonna probably use or you can probably use both of them at the same time right doesn't matter so this is all by the way these are some of the options that i'm writing down and trust me these are just just scratching the surface there are a lot many more ideas that you can do in while you are doing trying to split your data and train them right again another very easy way is to split based on say based on features right as in so you're gonna say high income low income and say if you have income as one of the features right so then it's easy to split your model easy to split your data points into buckets like high income low income or middle income right and you kind of split them into three buckets and you kind of train for each of those models each of those data points a separate model right because obviously as you can see that you know uh, if obviously if you have a model say of the census of an entire india right you would tend to probably think that of your more all the possible models 
uh, you would if you train a single model for all of the income groups that would be probably be slightly more erroneous right say if you are trying to predict how long people would survive obviously if you build a single model that kind of looks into the high income middle income and low income together that might be a bit more erroneous so you can split them into different groups and then kind of take an ensemble the same way you can split based on time so you can split if you have census data you can again split based on time so anything which is less than 30 years uh, 30 to 60 years so there is a way you can do that also right splitting based on age splitting based on time this exact technique is called stratified sampling right so you have data from different stratum so these are different stratum income high income low income middle income or different stratum and you are choosing from each one of them right time is again one of the things you can say geographical features right if you are collecting data of housing right housing data from different parts of the city so you can cluster them into again instead of building a model for all of them together you can take different regions and build them much better for each of those region and you can kind of do it so on and so forth right so these are these are all ensembling techniques and feature engineering techniques combined together right so there's nothing so this is the part where it kind of gets a, the line gets a bit blurry between what is feature engineering and how you're doing ensembling these are all similar so the idea here is still the same that you have to got to think out of the box right you just cannot stick with the fact that uh, okay, I think the specialist ideas are the only ones that have been covered in the lecture here. So in this lecture, we are going to cover only very specifically just random selection that to splitting by rows, right? So that's exactly what we are going to cover in the lecture. But just because we do that in lecture does not mean that is entirely the world is just limited to that option. So please take it again like we did with Nave aggregation. Please try and take out also time to think about what are some option optimal strategies that you're going to use to kind of split your data right so please put some thought behind that as well so now now that we have talked about it so now let's go back and kind of understand what is there here in the slides right so here we are talking about taking a training data like this and splitting them by rows right not by columns so you split them into multiple parts so there are once you split them into multiple parts then you train a model on each one of them and the same way you did soft voting you kind of still do the soft voting here so you do soft voting again here soft voting means just for any new data point you are just going to take the probabilities from each of the models and going to sum them and average them up right so that's what we are going to do here so now there are two methods that we are going to talk about first is called bagging the second is called pasting and that's about it so what are the differences between bagging and pasting there's nothing but a small difference which is how you sample these data points right so how do you choose them so i said they are randomly chosen right but again in random selection there are two possible options so the first option is you choose samples with replacement what does replacement mean so replacement means so for let's consider like an urn here so this is your all your data points right all your data points each of the rows are basically a circle here right so in replacement you're gonna choose one ball note down its number which is note down the data row number and then gonna keep it back right so now next time you choose you can again have the same data point being repeated right so this is how you choose right so you first time you choose row number one next you choose row number one and you kind of then row number two then five then 102 and again probably say five right because you once you choose chose the data row number five you put it back in this box right so so on and so forth so now this is one right so again next time you again choose so we have to split it multiple times you see here we have chose split it three times over so now again when you do the second round of splitting you choose one then you choose one again maybe again two three again three comes along then five then hundred and two again so on and so forth right and again you do the same process right you put once you do this you put them all back here and in the third case you again start off with two three and two gets repeated again because once you have chosen you note down the number and put it back right so in this case every row number can get repeated right in the same data set 
so this is replacement now what is without replacement so without replacement is again we have to select three data points right but here once we take out a sample we don't put that data no data row number back again right so you can start one then you can have two then you can have three then you can have five then you can again have seven but you cannot have anything which repeats right because once you have taken that out it is not put back in this box right so here one can only come once two row number two can come only once so this is row numbers please keep in mind these are all row numbers right so these are all row numbers and row numbers can come only once so in the next set again once you do this you put all of them back right so in the next set you can again start off with one you can start off with three again five again seven again maybe so on and so forth right but in each of this data set they are not getting repeated they can be repeated across multiple data set but within each data set they are not getting repeated right so again you have the third case where you start with three five seven and so on and so forth right so this is what is called with without replacement sampling this is called replacement sampling and this is exactly the difference between uh, the two methods that we are going to talk about right now so one is bootstrap aggregation which is bagging and the other one is called pasting so in bagging we are doing something called bootstrap sampling what is bootstrap is nothing but with replacement so when you are doing with replacement sampling and doing the rest of the process as it is that is called bagging if you are doing without replacement then it is called pasting so I've already explained to you what B in the bootstrap bagging kind of stands for. So the bagging is basically a shorter version for bootstrap aggregation. So what is bootstrapping is this process of sampling with replacement. So that is called bootstrap sampling. And when you do bootstrap sampling uh, and you then aggregate all of the model predictions, that is bootstrap aggregation and that is called bagging in short, right? So now, uh, because bootstrapping each individual predictor has a higher bias now why would that be because each of the models are trained on a much smaller data than it was originally if you had trained one single decision tree on the entire data versus compare that to training on each of those individual splits of the data right so you have, if you had trained an entire decision tree on this particular data so this would obviously be much lower bias than if you train with just a few samples of the data right so each of those models individually have a very high bias but when you combine across multiple models your bias kind of goes down right because you have each of those models which are extremely overfitted on each of those particular data sets they have extremely high bias but when you combine them their biases cancel out and you kind of end up with a model which is with lower bias and this is the same thing the third point which is overfitting right so i have already explained to you your individually each of your models are extremely overfitted right because they are fitted on a very so this is say if this is a thousand data sample and you're just taking 100 in each of them right uh, so 100 in each other so imagine this right your entire model had it been fitted on 100,000 data points that would have seen a lot more variety in data points right that would have been a lot more options lot more data points to train on so it would be a much lesser overfitted tree now you just train on 100 data points your model would obviously be fitting overly to on those 100 points right so those kind each of your individual models have extremely high bias and extremely high variance because they're extremely overfitted on a very small data but again like bias when you like bias when you kind of combine all of these models you tend to end up with a lower variance model as well right because now each of your individual model are probably overfitted but when you kind of take their average the variance goes down right so obviously what you see here is that generally the net result is this that your you would probably end up with something which is similar bias but with a much lower variance than a single predictor trained on the entire so if you train a decision tree on that thousand data points and versus compile that to 10 decision trees on individually 100 data points each of them you would end up with the final aggregation of the ensemble the ensemble would have a probably similar bias to the decision tree but a much lower variance because we know decision trees are much more prone to overfitting so decision tree trained on 1000 data points would have a higher variance than 100 than an ensemble of 100 sorry 10 decision trees trained on 100 data points right so this is something that you can clearly see with an example here so in this first case this is a decision tree individually and you can see here how closely 
the decision boundary kind of follows each of the data points. It's extremely curved and it's extremely fitted to each of the data points. Now, when you do bagging, you can clearly see the data point. The decision boundary has much been much better, right? It's much more smoother right now. It was extremely overfitted and it was extremely unsmooth. Now you see a much more smoother decision boundary out here, right? So this is exactly what we what we are explaining right now. And now also can let's understand that bagging is practical, right? So because in case of uh, if you're trying to train multiple models, you can very easily do that across multiple cores on the same CPU machine, right? So this makes bagging very, very suitable for, you know, scaling for a multiple large applications, right? Large scale applications. So now let's apply bagging to a real life data set and see if it can actually improve the performance of a single accuracy model, right? So now we are gonna what we are gonna do is take decision tree and logistic classifier what we are gonna do is first train individually logistic regression then individually decision tree and then take an ensemble of logistic regression and ensemble of decision tree and let's see how that goes right so this is what we do here we have initialized logistic regression decision tree and then we are gonna do dot fit right so what we're doing here is just fitting a single decision tree So now we're going to fit a single logistic classifier, right? So this is log CLF, which is a logistic regression, and we're going to fit that. So now we are going to fit a bagging classifier, which is a bagging of multiple uh, logistic regression algorithms. So this would be, there would be 100 logistic regression. So you now see this difference, right? So this is a bagging classifier API. What this says is, let's combine logistic regression models. How many of them? hundred of them and now you remember this diagram right so we needed to also say so this is so what this says is basically there would be hundred of such models right so there would be hundred of such models and what you're also saying here is max sample is hundred right so what you're saying is here individually also there should be hundred of those samples right so that is what i'm saying here so when you say n estimators you're basically specifying how many splits of the data you want and when you're saying max samples you're basically specifying how many data samples you want in each of those samples right so now you're going to train a bagging classifier which says bagging clf dot fit x train y train the same algorithm it's exactly same psych, it has exactly uniform API across whatever logistic, whatever function you want to do. So now you do that. You have trained something. So I've got the accuracy score, which is noted in this particular variable. We are going to combine, compare all of them together. So now what we are going to do is we are going to now train a bagging classifier again. But this time, instead of logistic regression, 100 logistic regression models, we are going to have 100 decision tree models and that's what you see here right so we again say decision tree classifier this is what you kind of want to ensemble how many of them again 100 how many data points do you want in each of the samples 100 and then you do the fitting again and now let's compare this scores right so obviously you can see that in case of decision tree, the decision tree performed way better as compared to a single decision tree, right? A single decision tree has an accuracy of 0.6919, whereas a bagging decision tree has an accuracy of 0.7892. Whereas in case of logistic regression, you see that your originally a single logistic regression was also performing decently good, which is 0 0.80. In fact, logistic regression bagging did not help much. It's almost the same. In fact, it's slightly decreased. So what is the, what is the thing that kind of happened here, right? We easily observed that the accuracy of bagging classifier is much better than of a single decision tree, but in, not in case of logistic regression. So why is that so? What could be a reason? Probably would be a good moment to kind of take a moment to think about it, but If you think now, if and if you think now about logistic regression decision tree, you know that decision trees are far more prone to overfitting than logistic regression are. You remember the decision tree idea is that you take a node, you split it, split it, split it. Until and unless you are kind of having some you pruning the decision tree by means of kind of specifying max depth or you're constraining the size. If you're not doing one of those things, you probably would end up with an overfitted decision tree, right? And that's why decision trees have extremely high variance. And they would tend to, that's what you see here, right? When you, it, on a test data set, you see that decision tree is not performing really good, right? It's alone. Now, what we had mentioned was, if you remember, in case of bagging decision tree, 
in case of bagging over, right? If it's a decision tree or a logistic equation, whatever it is, right? Your decision, if it's a bagging algorithm or any, for that matter, any ensembling ag algorithm, it kind of tends to reduce the variance of the individual predictors, right? Even if your individual predictors are extremely overfitted on a small subsample of the data set, if you combine them, your overall variance of the estimator kind of goes down and that is what is reflected here right your overall variance has goes gone down so that's why your bagging classifier is now more generalizable so this ensemble is much more generalizable which you can see with a slightly higher accuracy here if not slightly it's quite a bit higher here right 10 percent high which is not the case with logistic regression logistic regression is not very prone to overfitting so that's why in the first case also you see that it has done recent decently well and then the second case also it has done decently well right you might probably be kind of taking out you might probably be thinking in your mind that why would you even want to use decision tree right because at the end of the day it's something which is always prone to overfitting you need to do ensemble to kind of reduce the variance why not always just go ahead and do logistic regression right the idea here is that if you do always logistic regression, you are only going to be able to capture linear relationships, right? Uh, decision trees and all the other advanced algorithms that we know of are able to capture non-linearity. And when you're doing decision tree, you're obviously you're capturing non-linearity, but there's a cost to it, right? Which is basically it's prone to overfitting. So you want to capture non-linearity, but also not want to do overfitting. That's how you do it. You train an ensemble or you train multiple decision trees, each of them are prone to overfitting and each of them are obviously overfitted because they're training on a very small sample of the data but when you combine them you see the result here right the accuracy has gone up so this is a concept that we wanted to kind of touch down now, so now we are talking about the second concept which is the concept of pasting pasting is nothing much different from bagging except in bagging we took the samples with replacement in case of pasting we are going to be taking samples without replacement and we are going to repeat the entire thing as it is Log on to Grey Atom's learning platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.